Hello and welcome to Bites Bread and Barbecue. I'm Ross Cantino. Today we're going to take a little look at Garuda Dragon Eyes, the Linux operating system that is tailored for gaming. So come along for the tour. Well, let's take a look at the Dragon Eyes version of Garuda. Right out of the box, so they give you these very neat uh, neon icons as well as a top bar here. Um, that uh, gives you a very glowing uh, appearance with this rather dramatic dragon in the background here. Um, mostly this is right out of the box. I've done a few modifications. I play a lot of World of Warcraft, so I did make a desktop link to where my add-ons go so I can easily find them. Um, I've also installed an office suite because when you install the gaming version of Garuda, it does not come with any productivity software, really. Um, it comes with all the gaming tools, as the name implies. Um, but LibreOffice is a quick install. Uh, I also did some little development applications since I do programming. And I installed a series of different web browsers and also a email reader, um, <clears throat> Thunderbird, because the Dragonized version for gaming does not come with a mail client. Uh, client. However, all of these are easily installed from the software center, which is called Octopi, which this is really slick. I have not seen this in other distributions, but that's my personal experience. Um, this incorporates um, the Arch repositories as well as the AUR repositories. Garuda is Arch-based. So if you want to find any type of software, you just begin typing what you want to find. And I know it's blasphemy to install a Microsoft product onto a Linux product, but here um, I have to use Microsoft Edge for some of the different things that I do. Uh, and I installed Microsoft Edge onto this system. You just start typing that in in Octopi, and normally there'd be a green check mark here to install, but I've already done that. So you see my options are reinstall or remove, and you can manage all of your software from here. This was really, really slick. The other option that you have for installing software, since Garuda comes in the dragonized form with KDE as its underlying interface, you have Discover. Now, out of the box, Discover does not really work because uh, Flatpak is not installed with the default. Once you install Flatpak, you can then use Discover as you would on any other KDE installation. And you can install your favorite programs like Spotify and GIMP and everything, uh, just as you're used to doing with any other version of KDE and it sorts it if you want to see your office possibilities here or your graphics programs or whatever you want to do just like any other version of KDE but you have to install Flatpak first. Let's take a little look at what my system tells us here. Now this is running high fetch in a terminal window here. The terminal is console since this is KDE distribution um, and you can see this is Garuda Linux and because we are arch based we are running the latest version of linux kernel 16 point i'm sorry 6.16.4 um, <clears throat> this is the thing with arch it is a rolling release it is cutting edge so garita follows that pattern it's a rolling release cutting edge and that's really nice if you want to have the most up-to-date software and everything now occasionally, because it is so cutting edge, different things will break. Now, I have not experienced that yet, but it is well known to happen with rolling releases. But this does give you the latest software in every category by just updating your rolling release. Uh, you can see I have two different displays here. This is telling you that we also have the latest version of KDE, the 6.4.4 that it is using Wayland as its windowing system. So again, we have moved away from X11 and into Wayland, which is the coming thing for all Linux distributions, it's supposed to be a more efficient windowing system. Uh, you can see I'm running the Dragonized theme. Uh, that just means all these um, um, neon icons here with the, the dragon background that's present. Uh, console is the terminal and it tells you I'm running this on about an eight-year-old computer with an i7 and a NVIDIA GeForce 1060 so a little bit out of date here but it's running just great. 
memory usage because I'm running uh, recording software right now and other software in the background. I am using 3.23 gigs out of my 16. But uh, as you can see, moving around these windows, it does work pretty smoothly. Now, I wouldn't install this on a minimal system because the gaming software that's present does take up a bit more memory than some of the lighter installations of Linux. Um, but you can see that we're running fine. Now, just to demonstrate with this window here, some of the aesthetics that they give you, you do get your wobble windows uh, to move around here. Um, and you get the neon frames. Uh, it really is a, a good theme. Uh, it also comes with sticky corners. Now I turn those off um, because for whatever reason, every time I go to push this button, I was actually going to where it would change and uh, give me the option to switch between desktops and it was driving me crazy. So I turned my sticky corners off. Um, let's get rid of this terminal here. Let's take a look at what it installs. It does give you, this is all installed from the get-go. Uh, it gives you a ton of little games here that you can play in things like um, uh, Mahjong and all these, but all these little games come installed as well as Lutris for playing your uh, Windows-based games um, and other tools. Uh, Steam is also natively installed. So if we take down here, this icon is Garuda Rani, which is very interesting. It is a graphical interface that allows you to go through all the different um, system um, parts to this. Like if we go into the system settings, you see how you can change your audio to different things just by checking the boxes, all your containers, everything is very, very well laid out and you just turn them on and off. This is interesting too. You can do all of this on any version of Linux, but this is a really nice graphical interface to do all of the different things that you would do with uh, any of your um, system options. You can go through your boot, your boot tools, your gaming apps here. This shows you, again, that it's put in Lutris and some of these other things natively here, um, and it just puts them in from the get-go. Um, I, I thought that this was a very neat way to do this uh, and very interesting way. Now, I, for whatever reason, when I play World of Warcraft, supposedly it is supposed to run under Lutris, and I've run it that way for years on um, Linux. That doesn't work for me anymore, and I don't know why. I now have to run World of Warcraft under Steam as a non-Steam game and use their Proton Experimental uh, version of Proton um, to run Battle.net and it'll in instantly launch up uh, my Battle.net Battle uh, system and I can play my World of Warcraft on Linux seamlessly at, um, at that point. Um, one other little thing, I don't know if any of you use DaVinci for video editing, not really a gaming point, but um, Dragon Eyes comes with um, several different uh, with widgets and one of those was a menu uh, the global menu and what that does is that that puts all of your file boxes for example if I open the terminal back up if there was a menu up here it would go to the top much like a Mac uh, or <clears throat> let's launch Firefox here and it would attempt, instead of having everything in Firefox here, if we turn on our menu bar, right now it's at the top of the window. And if we take this down, you can see that it follows the window down there. But when the global menu is activated, it actually pops up here to the top, much like things would work on a Mac environment. Well, DaVinci Resolve does not like that global menu. And whenever you have that global menu and you use DaVinci Resolve, it disconnects your keyboard. So you can't type a thing in DaVinci Resolve with that global menu set in your system settings. So I did have to remove that. Once you remove that, DaVinci Resolve worked perfectly. And that's a little bug on the DaVinci end, not on the KDE end. Um, <clears throat> so, um, 
all in all, just taking a look at Garuda, quick glance for gaming. Uh, you can use this to do anything you want in Linux. You can make a productivity software, but the Dragonized version of Garuda does come with a bunch of built-in gaming tools that make it really nice to use. So if you found any of this interesting, give us the likes up. If you found it really interesting or worthwhile, subscribe to my channel. Uh, this helps me with YouTube and I'll be eternally grateful. So thanks for stopping by and have a good rest of your day. Bye.